Hey guys, Chad Hoover, Kayak Bass and TV, and today we're gonna talk about gear management. So anyway, today's video is gonna be a quick, to the point tip on how to manage tungsten, uh, how to prevent losing tungsten, and how to set up for a day of fishing and managing it from your PFD as like a wearable tackle box. So just gonna spin the camera around, we're gonna run this thing, and just gonna show you how I manage my tungsten and some of the other stuff with safety pins. Here we go. So like I said, there's Christy. She's out here helping out the like the lovely Vanna White from Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. I couldn't forget <laughs> remember the name for a second. And anyway, so this is kind of how I manage my tungsten for you know transport and storage. I got my different sizes together, my different weights, my different styles in Ziploc bags, and I store them in containers inside the bags. So let's move over here and kind of look at what we got going on. Then I'm gonna set the camera up and show you them close up. So this is a hot glue stick. I use that for keepers. These are um, trailer hooks. These are line stops, safety pins, big weights, trailer hooks, spinner baits, and then a little Ziploc bag that I put my, or I mean a hook bag that I put some weights in. So I'm just gonna run through all this real quick. Hopefully you'll pick up a cool little idea from it. Something that you can use for yourself. Like I said, it's real simple. It's just a tip and uh, yeah, let's do it. All right guys, so here we go. Hopefully this isn't too awkward, but it's real simple. Um, a lot of times Christy will be across the lake and she'll need a weight or something. And because tungsten's expensive, I haven't really like given her her own tackle box and her own hooks and a lot of that stuff. And she's getting frustrated with it. One of the things that I do to keep my stuff handy is I use safety pins and I put them inside my PFD. Uh, I use back stock in my PFD, which is basically just one of these hook packages right here. Okay, and then I fill it up with different size weights and different styles, so I got a little bit of everything. But the stuff that I'm using immediately, I put it on safety pins like this. So these are my beads, my acrylic beads from Woo, and then I put them on that safety pin, and even if it pops open, they're not going anywhere. And so I simply just take this piece and pop it off, take a bead off, put the keeper back on, and that works like a champ. The way that I make these keepers is just simply take a hot glue stick, all different diameters, and cut a little piece off of that with a pocket knife. So what this does is it doubles as a little tip that I use to make trailer hook keepers. So there's a buzz bait. You just take this and poke it on there and drive the tip on there. And then I usually just pull it on with my teeth. My dentist don't really like that. But bam, you got a trailer hook keeper. Thing ain't going anywhere. It's not going to dry rot. It's not going to melt. And it's a perfect little trailer hook keeper. The hook swings free and you have a better hookup ratio. So that's that. Now. The way that I manage my trailer hooks is like that. So I either put the hot glue pieces on there or I put these little live rubber pieces that come in the Mustad trailer hook packages. But I go ahead and pre-cut them. I go ahead and put them on that safety pin. I put them together and I either put them back in a hook package or I put them in my tackle box, you know, just like that. And then I can stick them in a PFD pocket. Makes it to where I've got them queued up, ready to go. If I take it off of the spinner bait or buzz bait because I'm hanging up too much, I can simply just stick it back on there and that manages my uh, trailer hooks and I got a couple of them locked and loaded. Now you can put three of one size, you can put three different sizes, you can interchange that with these pre-made Strike King version and stick them on there. But again, using the safety pin to manage them, what's cool about that is if you're like me and you've ever dropped something in a kayak, the first thing it does is find a scupper hole, right? It doesn't matter where you drop it, it's going to roll and find its way and you're going to get to watch it. Your eyes will find it at the last second as it goes out the scupper hole. So what this does is, again, you can put your tungsten on there, you can put your beads on there, you can put three of different sizes and have that locked and loaded. Uh, stick that in your pocket, put another safety pin through that hole and pin it on there. I like to pin them on the inside of the pocket, so I'll just take a smaller safety pin and I'll just go like this through the hole and then I'll pin it inside the pocket. And then when I open that up, I can just pop that off, put the weight on there, and it makes it easy to change it out. Now, I generally have that in the upper pocket of my PFD on the inside, and I just pin it to the overcut fabric right there. Makes it nice and clean. It's not at the bottom of the pocket. It doesn't get snagged on stuff. It's nice and convenient, and it's there when I need it. When I'm punching and flipping, these things are the hardest thing to come up with something for, and they're like 10 bucks. So if you ever drop one of these and it rolls down a scupper, you're screwed. And you don't normally have 10 of these because they're so expensive. So maybe your day of punching mats is over. So I really like to keep these things on um, 
on a safety pin. The reason for that is twofold. One, I can pin this to my jacket and then I got it right there. Two, I can vary from a one ounce to one and a half to two ounce, back down to three quarter, and it makes managing my heavier tungsten easier. But more importantly than anything else, when I drop this thing, it'll find the crack, it'll find the scupper, but it'll hang up and it won't go out the scupper. So it keeps it from rolling away. I can even put it in down in the drink holder. I can put it in the letters of my attack conceal kit, whatever. And it's just a real cool way to manage those weights. Again, you can also take another pin put it through the hole and just hang it off your PFD, hang it off your seat back, but it's a good way to manage that gear. Beads, excellent way to manage them. Again, this is just a hot glue stick. Take that, cut yourself a little piece off of there, makes a great keeper. And then when you stick that on there, if you happen to drop it in the open position, as long as that keeper's on there, you know, you can drop it and they're not going anywhere. They generally come in a little plastic bag like this, and on at least one occasion, I have opened this bag and dropped it, and every one of them rolled out like ants going to a picnic right out my scupper hole, and that was a pretty expensive droppage. You can use the safety pins again to manage your live rubber in both a pre-cut position, or you can stick the whole piece on there, and again, you've got it ready to go for when you need a trailer hook keeper. You just stick the pin through there just like this, pin it on the inside of your jacket, just like that, and then when you need a piece, you just clip it off with your line cutters, your clippers, and that thing stays clean and convenient and out of the way. Now, I'm not gonna get into showing you a whole bunch of different crazy configurations, but I really like using safety pins also for managing these really small hooks. These really small hooks a lot of times come in a package like this, and they're a pain in the butt to get out of the bottom of a tackle box, because they're small, they like to tangle up, and so if you just take your hooks, and you thread them onto your safety pin just like that. They stack up nice and clean. You can put different sizes in the same package and you don't have to fish through the package to get them because they're all organized and clean. Uh, you can grab the one safety pin. Now, I have seen people go so far as to put a tag on this side with a number so that you can label them. And so it doubles as both a labeling system and a hook management system but it just makes it really nice and easy and clean. You can put these in a sewing wallet and then it really gets your stuff organized. I haven't gone that far yet. Uh, I've seen them at the store when I've been there shopping for, whoops, just dropped one. I'll find that in a minute. And, uh, but that's why I do this. I do this so that I'm less likely to drop them in the kayak. I'm less likely to drop them out on the water. I'm less likely to drop them when I'm looking for what I need. And, um, it just makes a cool way to manage your hooks, to manage your weights, and to manage any kind of little bitty piece parts like the acrylic beads from, uh, from Woo. So, like I said, leave enough space that you can, you can secure it, and then all your hooks line up. They're nice and clean. Even when you put them back in the package, they don't get all tangled up. You can reach in there and grab the hook, the safety pin, drop the hooks in there. It'll, it's organized, you can put multiple sizes in there. Like I said, you can put the tab on there. You can link them all together so when you pull them out, you've got like a centipede um, version, but they work great. They do a great job of managing your line stops like that and it keeps the ends from getting all tangled up, makes them nice and clean and organized. And it's just a way, a great way to manage and organize the inside of your PFD. And it makes managing those little tiny piece parts and those things that you need out on the water that much less thought, thoughtless. It's easy, it's simple, it's clean. Uh, sometimes you'll talk yourself out of changing up when you're in a kayak because you don't have something that you need. So if it's right there in your pocket and you can grab it and switch it out, you can change up that presentation, you can put yourself in a position to catch better fish and you'll have more success and you'll be less frustrated. Kind of like Christy's been on the last couple of trips where now that she's starting to have some success, she's really getting frustrated when she doesn't, which is good. That little. She's competitive, so I like that. And um, But yeah, guys, that's a little simple tip on how I manage some of my gear. It's actually a couple of tips rolled into one. I could have milked this out and did just the tip hook keepers, just the tip making a friggin' um, hook stop for trailer hooks, but I'm not. I'm trying to bring you a lot of information and hopefully help you be more organized, more successful, and less frustrated out on the water. Do you have any questions, ma'am? You had a lot of questions when I was setting up, but now all of a sudden the <laughs> camera comes on and she's gun shy. Well, because you answered them as you were talking to the people at home or okay. in their car, wherever they are. 
So again, a lot of times, like I said, with the trailer hook, that's just a really small piece of um, hot glue, uh, or you can use a little acrylic tubes, and you can go to a pet store and get the little aquarium tubes and cut those up and make those into great hook keepers. So leave them all when you're fishing. Yeah, that's called a trailer hook. So that swims behind it. So a lot of times when you're reeling for a fish, you go ah oh, ah, oh, and you're missing them, and I'm going yeah oh, yeah, fish on. It's because I got a trailer hook on and she doesn't. It's nice <laughs> so, to know. It, guys? It's the reverse of the buddy lure concept. So the other <laughs> thing that say. you can do is um, You know, you can do these same types of trailer hooks since we're already getting into it. Uh, these are a little bit smaller I like these for really small spinner baits uh, And I even like them on some of my worm baits But you just take this type right here and the way that this works is instead of it being free swinging um, To where you can catch more fish. I'm just gonna leave this one on. And I'll take this back off when I'm done You simply thread it over the hook eye and now it will stick out. Hold on a second, guys. I'm kind of weak today. There we go. And it sticks straight back off the back like that. And it's right there. A lot of people think this is more effective. Um, and I agree when I'm fishing over wood. What I don't like about it is when you cast and it hits the water, that one folds back sometimes. And it, do, it gets caught up in the skirt or the hook eyes. And I really just like to fish the one that's free swinging unless I'm fishing over wood with a buzz bait and I really want that thing sticking straight out and I want it to uh, stay out of the way. So again, that's today's just the tip. This one ran a little long. Um, we'll have some more just the tips for you coming this week. Comment in the comment section below and um, we'll see you guys next time. Give the video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment. And if you just got here and you like what you see, go watch some more videos of course and don't forget to subscribe. Hey guys, one more thing. If you guys have questions, make sure to put them in the comments below. I'll read through them, and if there's really good questions, I'll make sure that he does a video about them. That way, we all learn together. So, thanks for the support, and make sure to put those questions down at the bottom. Thanks, guys.